Good morning. Good to see you this morning. We're glad that you're here with us. I hope and I pray that your Thanksgiving with your family or others. Um, I was looking at my memories on Facebook um, the other day, and there was a little um, note from Colleen Teat who said that Aaron wants to know what the difference is between an in-law and an outlaw. <laughs> and I said, the in-law are the people, that, they're the people that you like, and the outlaw are the people that you're supposed to love but can't like. So I hope the outlaws of your life were there and settled and found grace and peace in your house that morning, that afternoon. And so I pray that also that if you're an in-law or an outlaw, that you find grace and peace here at Dobbins as well. So let's stand together, uh, let's sing together in this time of worship. for all 
with my sins His blood washes me clean Raise my voice to Sing praise to my King He's forgiven me
seated. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor this morning. I'm going to ask you to uh, check our prayer list that's found in our lobby on our information table. A lot of the concerns are there um, for what has happened over the last couple of uh, days in this past week. Uh, we pray for the Pywell family who's, who Walt died um, on Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. Uh, we pray for the family and let them know. Um, check in with them. Let them know that you're thinking about them and that you are there with them. Also, pray for the McCloskey family, who uh, Carolyn died as well um, yesterday. So we've had some uh, significant deaths, in not just in our congregation, but also in our community. So I'm going to ask you to pray with me and pray for these families as well. So God, we are grateful that, God, you have made us and see us as everything. God, we're grateful that when you look at us and you see us, you see your children, you see your sons and your daughters, you see that we are made and created and hardwired in the image of you, and that God, everything that we feel and experience in this life, the emotion, the joy, the sadness, the grief, the happiness. God, that's all comes from you and how, God, you created us. So, God, we are grateful that we are not hopeless, that we don't need to feel helpless, that, God, we have this hope of not just life one day with you, but that, God, you provide us with life here and now, that, God, you provide us with what we need for this these moments that we experience. And so we do pray for the Piewell family. We pray for the McCluskey family. God, we pray that, God, you would just overwhelm them, God, with your presence. That, God, you would remind them that, God, you are there with them in every moment of every day. That, God, you are, you are present with them in every one of those moments. God, in those moments of deep sadness, but, God, but also, God, those moments of joy. So God, in everything that we may be feeling this morning, in everything that we may be experiencing, whatever level of exhaustion we bring, whatever level of joy that we may bring, whatever we may be experiencing in our heads and overthinking what's going on in our lives, God, when, whatever we may be feeling in the seat of our emotion, our hearts, God, we pray that you would just give us this, these moments of peace. That, God, we'd be mindful, that, God, we would remember, that, God, we would know, that we would be aware, that, God, we would see and we would know that, God, you are present. That, God, you are with us. And here's what's so significant, God, and this is what we thank you for this morning. God, that you are with those others. That, God, we need to be mindful of the fact that, God, you are with other people too. That, God, you are with those who haven't even come here this morning, who, who can't be here with us this morning. God, we are mindful of the fact that, God, you are with those who haven't 
and aren't in relationship with you and God as you are present in their lives, bringing them to you. So God, this morning we pray for them as well. We pray for those who have lost their way. We pray for those who have chosen their own paths. We pray for those who are just overwhelmed. We pray for those who continue to grieve, especially at this time of the year. So God, with all of this, we give to you because God, we can't handle it on our own. And God, we, our hope is in you, knowing that God, you are present in it, that God, you are giving us strength, comfort, and peace. And so God, we pray all of this in your son's name. And friends, we pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I don't know if you notice, I, I tend to wander when I pray. I was actually down here at one point and made my way back up there. I don't know how that happened. Um, we want you to know that if you're here with us for the very first time, we're glad that you're here. We want you here. We've been praying for you to come. And we hope that you find and discover uh, not just the warmth and the love of the people sitting around you, but also that you will discover and know that God loves you and wants to be with you. And that even though it may be difficult for you to even wrap your head and your heart around that at this moment, that's okay. This is a starting point for you. So there's a couple announcements, and there's announcements before we collect our offering. And so if you're an usher and you're collecting our offering this morning, you can either meet Pete and Paul in the back. They're standing there. Um, and so if you're, you're collecting offering, meet them in the back as I do or provide some announcements. Uh, next uh, Sunday, December 2nd, we're going to have our annual wreath-making uh, time together, and that's a family event. Um, details about that are found in your bulletin, but let me just give you kind of give you a summary of it. At 3.30, we'll be here doing our wreath-making. Um, after that, we'll be eating some food. Um, after that, then we will have a, kind of a short kind of service of Advent, lighting the candle at the, um, the first candle on the Advent wreath. This is just something that we do to get together and be present with one another. It's, an, it's another opportunity for us just to spend time together. And that's pretty significant for us. I find it significant anyway, because I can go all week without seeing some of you, and it's nice to be able to do something a little bit more on a Sunday night to see you and spend some time with you. So uh, come for the wreath making, come for the food, just come for the service, I don't care. But be, we're here, we're going to be doing this next Sunday um, after church um, at 3.30 and looking forward to it. Uh, there's a, a tree with some snowflakes on it. Um, every year we collect gifts for some folks in our community who just can't provide for their families. And so there are opportunities for us to serve our community and to be present with them in that. So you'll find on that um, sad Charlie Brown Christmas tree... By the way, I want you to know that's my sad Charlie Brown Christmas tree. All right? So that's in the back. has snowflakes on it. Go ahead and grab those uh, when you can, if you can. We understand that sometimes it's even difficult. So if you want to team up with another person or another family to do something like that, that would be wonderful. Uh, please don't feel like it, you're obligated to do that. Um, you may be doing that for some other kind of organization. We completely get it but we're just trying to serve our community and the people in our community as well. Uh, Kids Alley, um, we'll be collecting some uh, gifts for them as well. Kids from um, Kids Alley Ministry is a ministry that provides for kids. And I've spent some time with these kids and I've spent some time, some time with their parents and their, their guardians and their kids out of Camden, uh, just like you and I. But it's an opportunity for us to provide for them as well. I've, I remember talking to at least one of them the moms of one of the kids that go there 
and I remember her telling me that she worked the night shift, um, and she she took um, she took a bus to this place to work the night shift, and then went home, slept for a couple hours, and then got her kids off to school. So there is a real need that goes on, and I know that need also mirrors the need that we see in Burlington County as well. But this is one of the ministries that we have in Camden County that we support regularly. So uh, I don't know about you, but uh, we already started decorating. Kids are going to go over next door to decorate my um, parsonage. And we look forward to that. Not really. I mean, I don't like decorating, but my kids like decorating. Um, my, the worst part, the thing I hate the most about decorating is putting lights on the tree. I like the effect of the lights, but I don't like actually doing the lights. And so I, I pay off my kids by feeding them. And I no longer can reach to the top of the tree anymore, so my two boys have to reach and put the actual star on the top of the tree. I actually asked Kenzie if she could come over and do that because she's wearing, and she's a lot taller than me now. Um, Jamie Kurtz's uh, little girl. She's no longer little. So you're going to be going through some stuff today uh, with decorations and trees. And If you've already started decorating, awesome. If you haven't, I would recommend that you start now so that we can borrow or you would like to donate gently used Christmas items. Trust me, I don't want anything that's coming from you to say, hey, by the way, we don't need this anymore, and I get a tree that looks like Charlie Brown's tree. All right? Because we're going to decorate it, and it's going to still look like a Charlie Brown tree. It's not magical like the cartoon. But we're looking for some gently used decorations. We went through all of our stuff last year, and we realized that a lot of the stuff that we owned here at the church is super old. And it was falling apart. So we're looking for some gently used Christmas items. If you're not using it anymore, you'd like to donate it to the church. That would be wonderful, um, and we would appreciate it. So, um, Because we like to decorate in here. So if you have a tree that you're not using anymore, we're going to probably throw it in one of these choir lofts. If you have some Christmas ornaments, that would be great. We could decorate those trees with it or someplace else in the congregation or the church. So. I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. So uh, the, those who are um, collecting our offering, we like to call them ushers. They're just people. So we have some people coming down. They're going to collect our offering this morning. And um, as we do that, as the ushers collect our offering, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you to stand with me, and we're going to sing to God be the glory.
So what makes the Thanksgiving meal the meal? Like what's essential to your Thanksgiving meal that makes it the meal? Is it the turkey? Is it cranberry sauce? Is it some kind of special side? Because I'm all about the sides, by the way. I'm, I could go the rest of my life and not ever eat another piece of turkey, and I would be fine. So you know, in my house um, on Thanksgiving, uh, the, the kids came up the night before, and the, I decided that we were going to keep it simple. You know, we weren't going to have like a million sides, right? So I made a turkey and I made a ham. And I was actually contemplating taking the ham, ham and shoving it into the uh, turkey. Um, and just because I thought it would be fun to have a turkey slash ham kind of meal, but I decided against that. Um, and I know you just had the image in your head of what that looked like, and that's kind of funny too. Um, so my daughter convinced me to actually use stuffing this year and stuff it in the bird. That did not turn out as much as I'd like to if it turned out, uh, but we had some stuffing on the side with some hot sausage, hot Italian sausage in it. But honestly, that's not what makes the meal in the Mitchell household. This is what I heard from my kids. So I said, I'm keeping it simple this year. And this is what they said to me. Dad, make sure my mom brings the Grand's Biscuits. <laughs> so I'm like, no problem. So my parents got there when they felt like getting there, which was like 15 mi minutes before I decided that I said that we were going to have the meal, then said, all right, we kind of got to wait for your grandparents and your, your aunt and uncle and uh, your cousins. But my dad shows up with a bag of Grand's Biscuits. And I looked at him and said, dude, you going rogue on me this year? Because you usually get the can, right? So this is what we normally get. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like big and puffy and like delectable, right? And so my dad went rogue this year and got a bag of 38. My dad's doing the shopping now. I don't know what happened in his life. Um, I think he maybe found Jesus again. Maybe my dad was born again, again. My mom always did all the shopping, so I was like blown away because my mom knows what the kids like, right? My, my mom... Anytime they see my kids, my mom's like, I brought you those turkey meatballs that you love. Like, my dad only eats turkey and chicken, so they, she brought him, they, she always brings the kids. And so they get eaten, either by me or them, or we'll eat them today probably, I don't know. But, like, it wasn't the can. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these things? So we broke over the bag, they were fine. They weren't as big and fluffy and gooey. Like, so one of the reasons why is that we want these Grand's Biscuits because um, Nathan, I know, at least Nathan, takes the Grand's Biscuit, you know, this big honking piece of bread, doughy delight, and takes mashed potatoes, takes turkey, maybe even threw a little bit of ham in there this year, I'm not really sure, and puts that and makes a sandwich makes two or three sandwiches of this gooey, ooey delight. Oh, yeah, let's not forget about the butter. That You know, when you bite into that biscuit and you got all that in there, it kind of drips down your hand. I know. They're essential. Absolutely essential to how we do life at Thanksgiving. In ancient Israel, bread was essential at every meal. Bread was a connection with life. It was a utensil to scoop food. So you know what I'm talking about, right? You take your biscuit and you get into the end of your turkey and your mashed potatoes. What do you do? You take a bite out of it, right? And you get that little semicircle in there and you jam it on your plate and that's what you use to get the food a little bit quicker into your mouth. Well, food, bread in ancient Israel was just as essential. It was a utensil to scoop food, it was a connection with life, and it was the easiest thing to make with, uh, and also the quickest um, if they needed to. So bread was connected, and what they believed about bread was that bread connected or was connected or represented this abundant life and wisdom that they received from God. 
So when the disciples learned about this in that Lord's Prayer that we always pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and we're going to skip down, give us this day our daily bread. They saw that bread as essential for how they did life because it represented for them or it was connected with God providing for them this abundant life and wisdom for every day. So if you wanted to get the people on your side as a government, you would give out bread. And so when Jesus came... They were hoping that he would be that Messiah that gave out bread so that he could win over followers and get them to do his will and not the will of the government. So bread was essential. 